Here's our old friend, the high gain SATCOM converter. It takes some special tricks or tips to make noise figure measurements on these high gain devices where we have to drive them with such a low power. So let's see how that's done. Let's set up the measurement for our uh, high gain converter. Now I know I need to have the power level quite low, so I'm setting it at minus 70 dBm. And what I've done is I've set it to an open loop mode that allows me to go from the attenuator setting down 60 dB. This is the most convenient way to get a low power without having to change the attenuators. The noise figure I've set to the low receiver gain because I know I'm going to have a lot of excess noise. And let's take a sweep. I've set up also a dot relative noise power measurement and an S11 measurement. And we'll single sweep. And I see this error message here, ADC over range. Let's look at the dut relative noise power. And if I auto scale him and look at the marker, it's got 66 dB of excess noise, 66 dB above KTB. Normally we say the noise figure receiver has to be under 60 dB of excess noise. That number varies a little bit depending on how wide band the signal is. And this is a quite wide band signal, so it's got a lot of noise power. So uh, we can choose another option which is to change the noise figure receiver to be the network analyzer receiver. So we'll go and make it a network analyzer receiver. OK. And I can go ahead and turn the RF power on and say trigger single. So I think we're ready to set up and do a calibration. Before I start the calibration, I'm going to set the uh, power offset in the channel to minus 12 dB. That's because I know I have that reverse coupler, which will lower the power offset. And I'll set my source attenuator to 10 dB, the open loop power, to um, or leveling mode to open loop. And that means I can set my power down as low as, well, we'll say 100 and see what it says I can get. So I can get down to 82 dB. That's the minus 10 dB of the attenuator, minus 12 for the offsets, minus 22. And then we can always go 60 dB lower. And that's plenty low enough for where I need to go. Usually I want to keep about, um, uh, not go more than, uh, 5 dB above the attenuator plus the loss, so that'll be somewhere around 5 minus 22, around minus 17. So I'll say minus 20 is where I'm going to do my calibration. So I've disconnected my device under test, and I'm going to start my calibration. We want to calibrate at a high power level so that I don't have noise in my calibration. Then I just have to remember to lower the power level when I connect my device under test. And I'll say measure. After the power meter measurement, we connect port 1 to port 2. This is where we use the power meter measurement and reference receiver on port 1 to calibrate the network analyzer receiver as a noise receiver on port 2. And finally, we do the ECAL step to finish up the calibration. And at the end, we save the CAL set away. And this is the tricky part. Before we connect my device, I want to lower the power level back to minus 70 dBm. And now we can take a sweep and see what we see. That my noise figure is a nice and beautiful little less than 0.1 dB noise figure. So let's scale this up. And we can see it 2 dB per division or 1 dB per division. I have a beautiful 1 dB noise figure measurement on this high gain converter. And it's being driven at minus 70 dBm. Just for fun, we'll drive it down as low as we can to minus 82. See if maybe I have a slight bit of compression. And take one more sweep. We see that the, very slightly the noise figure went down because maybe the gain before was slightly into compression. And just one more thing. I often get asked how important is the vector calibration. So let's stick this data into memory and we'll data and memory. We have the ability to change the correction method on the fly in many of our channels. So we can change the correction method from a vector cal to a scalar cal and uh, then take another sweep. Don't pay attention to that data. It doesn't have what we need in it yet. So the scalar cal is much faster, but we might see a little deviation from the vector cal. Now remember I'm using a PNA directly to the test port, so I'm getting a pretty good uh, match, but not a perfect match. And you can see here I've given up about 0.2 dB of noise figure at the center of the band by using the scalar cal and the, instead of the vector cal. And we can see a little lift here. Probably this is due to mismatch effects. So if 0.2 dB is not important to you, no reason to use the vector cal. 
If you're trying to get all the way down to 1 dB, then you might need to use it. 